Okay, so the mailman came today and uh, delivered these diamond style gold foil, foil pickup frames, which is super exciting. They, they just feel smaller than I thought they were going to be. Um, they're really expensive. These were like £25, so about $50 each. I've uh, got two of them, um, plus the base plate, which is this guy here. Plus, I did buy some of the uh, aluminium gold foil to go in the back of it, which is going to look cool, but I might not use that, and I'll tell you why. This will actually cause eddy currents, which is basically a compression in the high frequencies uh, due to, you know, losses, um, magnetic losses, um, I believe. And essentially what that does is it takes this sort of like a bit of top end uh, sparkle off the pickup. Now, if you think about the Filtertron, um, that pickup cover was specifically designed to avoid eddy currents. Gold foils have got a notoriously sort of like bright, jangly, open, airy sound, and I fear that by kind of putting this um, aluminium on there, it is going to dampen the sound, which is not going to be a great thing. Now, isn't that part of the design, you might ask? Well, the answer is no. Traditionally, they actually used uh, paper or fabric um, with like a sort of a paper backing on it, probably because it was cheap and readily available and looked, you know, looked the part. But inadvertently, that avoids any issues in terms of eddy currents. So what I've done is 3D printed uh, a little mold here to emboss this gold card, which is all I can get, um, or the closest thing I can get to sort of gold foil. And when that's actually embossed, um, it looks like this. Now this is slightly misformed because I actually wet the back of it, um, which gives you a nice deep finish on there, but it also, uh, of course, distorts it. But yeah, I'm really happy with that. And I actually prefer the color of that one to that one. I think it looks kind of, uh, more authentic and just, I don't know, just looks nicer to me. Anyway, so that's probably what we'll use on there. One of the issues, though, that we are facing um, is I deliberately chose uh, a pickup like this because I could have gone like a um, more of a Tesco, 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 Tesco pickup, which are bigger, and that would have filled the hole better but they're not really in keeping or they're not at all in keeping with a 1954 Gibson whereas the would have been you know um, a, a supplier of aftermarket pickups in the late 50s in this style but what it does leave is the question of what are we going to do in order to make this big enough to fit it and the answer is we're going to fit some custom made pickup rings and what we're going to use for those pickup rings is some nice flamed maple. Particularly the neck pickup is going to be really close to the strings um, if it just sits on the body. So given that uh, the body is already hacked, what I'm thinking is uh, we'll make a pickup ring and allow it to sink down into that pickup ring and maybe a couple of mil into the body just to give us a little bit more playroom here with a bit more wiggle room um, and on the bridge pickup we'll actually have to raise it up so that it's close enough you know gold foils are notoriously weak pickups so we'll raise that up um, so what we'll do is essentially make a pickup ring that acts as a riser but I'll also route a little bit out of it so that we have some height adjustment in that so that is the plan So we've made ourselves a nice little template here. Um, this is the hole uh, for the pickup to sit in. So if you look at this guy here, that sits nicely in there with a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, and then underneath here, what we've got is this little slot. And what we'll do is we'll push that in 
Uh, and then we will uh, route this out, and that is going to be lovely. We're going to just put our little routing template over the top of that nice solid surface there. I've just got to uh, pattern follow a route a bit. Really nice clean route. Okay, so I'm super happy with those. Um, let's just put a rough pickup together. And that's gonna go in there. Yeah, I think that's gonna look really nice. So that's gonna be something like that. And then the other one is going to be the same deal, but like that. All right, so we've just rough placed these uh, pickup rings in. Uh, I'm really pleased with the look of them. Obviously, they're going to need a bit of a stain, which will actually make that um, that curly maple really pop. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, we probably won't go as dark as um, as this amber here because I do. You know, we're not trying to sort of like match them we're just trying to make them look sympathetic so you know probably the same sort of color as ultimately the amber you know speed knobs will be something like that anyway obviously particularly with an arch top we've got a bit of an angle there and you get this on a les paul as well because the neck is not uh you know doesn't run parallel to the, the surface of the actual body um so for that reason a this guy needs to be taller than this guy which you know is a given um, but also, I think what we'll do is we'll angle these, and what I really want to achieve is basically that the pickups are um, sort of parallel to the strings, or the top of the pickups is parallel to the strings. So rather than angling the top and having like more pickups sticking outside, you know, this way, what I'll do is actually sort of angle the bottom so the whole thing is parallel. You know, the top of the pickup is parallel to the ring, it's parallel to the strings all of that stuff and hopefully it won't look strange it might look a little bit odd here because this one's going to be sort of tipping back um, but we're not talking a huge amount i did a preliminary measure earlier and got about sort of three three mil difference between that side and that side and two mil trend that side and that side i'm actually pretty happy with that height there um you know, by the time we've tipped that back, I think that's going to be good and it will give us some adjustment. We'll set this to three millimetres and give or take. Lock that off and just run it down this bottom line here. And then we just repeat the process with this guy. So I've made myself a router template. It's surprisingly flat around here, actually, not in the perimeter, not in the sort of center of this. Um, this block is not actually touching the um, the arch top because of the nature of the arch. But actually, around here and around here, it's relatively flat. So what I've done is I've just put some uh, low tack tape here, um, taped the underside of this uh, of this jig here, put some super glue on there, and I've centered it all up now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do two passes here. So the first pass uh, is actually going to be this little router bit, which will go all the way through and will clean up these edges here because there's a three point something, 3.1 mil offset um, between the bearing and there. So it'll actually sort of leave a lip there. And that lip there, we're then going to sort of run a um, flush trim router bit round and give ourselves a ledge. And that will serve uh, to seat some uh, the spruce in that we're gonna plug these holes so that basically we've got a, a backstop rather than relying on mostly end grain to stick those things in. Now, obviously we've gotta be super careful not to plow the whole way through because otherwise we're gonna to have to stick like, you know, massive humbuckers or something in there to, to cover up the uh, atrocity. So uh, this is a one chance job, but I'm fairly confident we can do it right.
what we can do is just stick a little bit of tape on these edges here just to stop it from tugging the finish there Okay, so let's have a quick look at that. See if we got away with that. Let's peel this diagonally and towards the opening. Very, very clean there. Um, all in all, pretty happy with that. So the next phase is to change the route a bit and just route our little ledge there. On the second, third, third acoustic I, I made, um, had a real disaster uh, in that the bit came loose, so I was routing a binding channel and it was just getting deeper and deeper and deeper because the bit was you know, dropping down. So total nightmare situation uh, that I'm very averse to these days. Oh, that's too deep there. Okay, so we're gonna have to do two different depths. So moment of truth, get these off, hopefully don't put too much wood there, no that's looking good, cool, alright, that's that's looking good actually, so we've got a little ledge to glue these in, they're nice and central, and looking nice and clean here. Okay, so we're gonna plug up the uh, the pickup holes and the reason for that is, first of all, I don't actually think that we need all of that depth anymore. We might route slightly into the top on the neck pickup, um, but on the bridge pickup, you know, the strings are so far away from there that there's literally no reason uh, to have a hole there. But the other thing is as well, um, guitars, you know, the, the, the sort of vibration, counterintuitive as it is because you strum you know, transversely from, you know, the bass side to the treble side, the vibrations or the waves actually go from the nut to the bridge and back. And so there's like a, a compression and an expansion that happens there um, that will be thwarted by any sort of like holes uh, in the structure um, that happen to be between those two points. And of course, like two pickup holes is a very significant uh, you know, hole and weakness in that structure. So what we're going to do is we're going to get um, two pieces of uh, the spruce. Uh, this is just like some spruce uh, bracing material that I happen to have in. We're going to get those two pieces. It's nicely quarter sawn instantly, which is really consistent with our top. And I'm just going to join them like this. Um, obviously, this is way too thick, but once I've jointed them, I'm then going to re-saw them so that it's basically two roughly 10 mil slabs there. Then we're gonna route that using um, some uh, router templates that we've 3D printed um, that will work really nicely with the holes that we routed. We just want to kiss the surfaces. And I'm going diagonally for two reasons. Firstly, um, you get a nicer cut because you're slicing rather than sort of chopping, but also, you get a wider surface area so the plane is more stable. I'm actually going to use just tight bond here. Okay, so that is now all nicely jointed up. Uh, really nicely jointed up actually. So it's a beautiful piece of spruce and it's about twice the thickness that we want. Ideally it would be a little bit thicker just to give us a little bit more wiggle room but hopefully we'll get away with it. Failing that I've got more that I can just join. Um, I'm just hoping to get two 
or both of these holes uh, out of this one piece of stock. So I hummed and hired about how I was going to do this because uh, it's a little bit awkward because what we've got to do is we've got to get a sort of a piece that sits in here really tight so it's a nice joint on the other side that you know it won't be visible because it'll actually be covered by the pickups and pickup rings but you know we want it to be as good as possible um, and then you've got this little lip that I put in there so that we had a much better sort of gluing surface um, just to make it sort of structurally sound and um, there was also some crap like this that really you know, I was trying to sort of get rid of as much of that bad stuff and just give ourselves a good gluing surface so um, unfortunately I don't have the right size rabbit bit like when I uh, did this one here I used a bit where the actual sort of cutter head was uh, 6.4 mil or you know uh, a quarter of an inch and the bearing was half inch so it gives you approximately 3.2 mils or an eighth of an inch um, of difference there which is what creates that lip unfortunately I don't have that with uh, rabbit bits I've only got um, one and a half mil and then like four and a half mil or something like that I just didn't have it in so what I've resorted to is um, 3d printing uh, some templates so basically these guys will fit in here really snugly like that I'm gonna stick this guy onto here and use that as a template and then sort of route down about six to eight millimeters i think and then what we're going to do after we've done that is i'm going to use this because essentially what you'll get is it will it kind of look like that but this will be wood because we'll have channeled out you know around there then i'm going to get this guy here and that will actually sit on top of here um using this as like a sort of um a centering thing um and then i will route around that the final um sort of perimeter of this now this was a really crappy 3d print unfortunately but the sides are absolutely fine so i hope all that makes sense uh if not you will see it in action right now i've actually sort of fine-tuned these for the holes you know the holes are imperfect i mean by you know points of a millimeter but uh, you know, enough to want to sort of fine tune them. Bit of super glue, bit of activator, line it up with that line and bring them down there. And with any luck, this won't be an enormous catastrophe. Okay, so that was a little bit hairy. The idea here is uh, I can then stick this guy on like that and then buzz around it with the router. Bridge. Let's just do a dry run. That's going to go in nicely. Beautiful. Plenty of paper towel on the ready, but let's get some underneath the guitar so that we don't uh, slop it everywhere. And hot hide glue. Nice thin mix. Paint it all along here. Make sure that we have it on all surfaces that need to be glued. Rinse and repeat on the neck. Yeah, it's going in nicely. Like. Oh, that went in nicely. Let's make sure that it is nicely here. There it is, that's beautiful. So, uh, that is our neck and bridge pickup uh, inserts 
put into place and what that will do is number one it will re-strengthen these and it's going to give us um, some something to bear these braces upon so all in all the guitar is going to be much stronger and will probably sound better as well i've just been uh, trying to uh, sort of plane this down a little bit um, on this side so the way that I've been doing it is just using this tiny uh, Ibex uh, violin makers plane and these things are really great and they're sort of curved soles they're very sort of, uh, gentle and you know um, good for doing irregular surfaces So as we get down to the the final stages with this, obviously we, if we have the tape on there, then you have the, this will always be um, the height of the tape higher than the body. So you have to sort of like take it off and go, go naked. All right. So yeah, the general plan then is basically to, to keep this um, naked wood and to glue the pickup rings on there. My thinking is, certainly on this neck one, I probably will have to route into the top wood still. I won't go it, it, as deep as the braces, but uh, by gluing on the pickup ring, it essentially is like an external brace that top is so much more sturdy even with just those pickup inserts in them.